He has come to reign. First Bible lesson, Acts chapter 1 verses 10 and 11 And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Second Bible lesson, Hebrews chapter 2 verses 7 And it thou madest him a little lower than the angels, thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands, thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Golden text, Revelation chapter 12 verse 5 And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. Brethren, the three texts form the basis of our sermon. This is not the time to deceive any person, either with vision, dream or otherwise. It is said, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of Jehovah God and his Christ. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15. It is also said, what was done to the Israelites shall also be done unto the Gentiles. His coming had been revealed, and this is the time for the manifestation of the revelation. It was revealed, a young girl would give birth to a male child, and his name would be Emmanuel. It was also revealed, a woman shall deliver a man child, who will rule the world with a rod of iron. All power in heaven and on earth, according to the revelation, is handed unto this man child. The revelation has been fulfilled this day, but the world does not know him. The world is instead gazing into the sky, going to the mountain tops, and gathering stones and sticks to seek for power and help. Why has this wisdom eluded the whole world? The problems of the world are brought about by this ignorance. When you say, you cannot worship any man, who was the one who ascended? Was he a stone or a stick, fish or an angel? Which angel has God ever told, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee? Hebrews chapter 1 verse 5 The angel made it clear, through the revelation, the man-child shall be brought forth by a woman. In the first advent, his name was given as Jesus, the Immanuel, meaning God with man. But this time around the mystery is, no name has been given. But it is said in the scriptures, he will come with an iron rod to rule the world. Therefore, if you fail to know and recognize this person, who had been empowered to rule the world, with an iron rod, and into whose hands all power in heaven and on earth is entrusted, you are doomed. If all power and authority is given to this being, you refuse to recognize, what will you do on the day of judgment? All the trees, stones, angels, and the rest of the creatures bow down and worship him. If you, man, refuse to worship him, from where will your salvation come? Do you remember what happened to Lucifer? In the case of our Lord Jesus Christ, it was prophesied, a young girl should bring forth a male child, and his name shall be called Jesus. But in this case, the revelation is that a woman shall bring forth a man-child, who will rule the world with a rod of iron. This latter revelation has since been fulfilled, and the man-child is ruling with a rod of iron. The problem with the world is, they do not know him, and instead of seeking to know and recognize him, they are saying, they cannot worship a man. The first Adam was a child of God, and the second Adam was a child of God. The third Adam is the manifestation of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. He has been given all power and authority with which to rule the whole world. He therefore has not come as a preacher, prophet or a messenger, but as a king with power and authority to rule heaven and earth. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 The first Christ was given superintendency over the fishes in water, the birds of the air, the animals in the bushes, the trees and all the things created by God. Since that time the authority was given to him, has he been dethroned? Or has the authority been taken away from him? He came back, to continue his kingship in the kingdom of his father, which endures forever. At that time, his itinerary was not made a matter of, no cross, no crown. In the same manner, he has come again, not answering to Jesus, but with a new name and with a rod of iron, to rule the world. He has come with a new name, which is written beneath his garment, which no one knows except himself. Those of you who question, 
why the Father has not revealed this wisdom to the entire world? Have you forgotten Herod's intention and plans when he heard a king was born? To make sure Herod had no rival and no other person reigned during his lifetime, Herod ordered all male children of particular ages be killed. That shows you how wonderful man is. But unfortunately for man, God is all-knowing. If God were to disclose to the world, like it was done in the case of Jesus Christ, human beings and governments would rise up in arms against such a person. Nobody knows whether he is black or white for now. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so also has God's wisdom surpassed man's. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9 How will you be able to know this person, who is destined to rule the world with a rod of iron, and who has been trusted with all power and authority in heaven and on earth? It is written, he will come like a thief in the night. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 2 A fool at forty is said to be a fool forever. Being fooled once is understandable, but to be fooled a second time means you are a fool forever. God has since realized, messengers and prophets and even his begotten son, he has been sending down, end up being slain by man. That is why, this time around, he has decided to come by himself and with full grace. His advent has therefore eluded the entire world. The world is wasting its time, energy and money to visit the sun, moon, stars, and the rest of the planets to investigate and try to find out about this mystery. They are merely wasting their time, because power and authority over all the planets is in the hands of this being, whose identity they are trying to unravel. If your enemy intends to go to war with you, and he has 1,000 soldiers, while you have only 20, the only remedy is for you to go and make peace with him. Initially the world had taught this kingdom to be a thing to joke with. But they have realized, it is not something to toy with. When a child is born in the world, the people will try to investigate, through various ways to know, what kind of a person the child will grow up to be. If they realize, the child is likely to be prominent, they will find one way or the other to eliminate the child. For those who are waiting the arrival of our Lord Jesus Christ from the sky, if it should happen like that, what do you think the enemies would do? Would they allow him to land at all? And if he has to land at all, where will he land? With the human laws over the land, sea and air, where would the people allow him to land? The same thing that happened to the Israelites and the people of old is repeating itself today. It was stated in their books, Elijah shall come before the Messiah. Matthew chapter 11 verses 10 to 15 To make matters worse for them, Elijah was taken up in a manner known by the people, and because of that, all of them expected him to come back in that manner, before the arrival of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore when Christ the Messiah arrived, without the appearance of Elijah as stated in their books, the people disbelieved him. Even up till now, the Israelites are still expecting the arrival of Elijah. Their hearts were further hardened to enhance their disbelief, because of their ill will and evil intentions. The same thing continues today. The people failed to know, John the Baptist, who was brought forth by Elizabeth, was the Elijah, who had come to herald the coming of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 11 verse 14, Mark chapter 9 verses 11 to 13. Herod asked the wise men to inform him after seeing the newborn king, so he too could go and worship him. If the wise men had gone back to inform him, would Herod not have gone straight, or sent soldiers, to kill him? As God hid that knowledge of the new king from that generation, so also has he hidden the knowledge of the iron rod ruler from the present generation. He has said in John chapter 14 verse 19, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Therefore when you pray God to reveal this mystery to the whole world, do you imagine what eyes they would want to see this kingdom with? Those whom he desires to see, and to know him, he has revealed himself unto them. The worldly people are unbelievers, and they do not like the truth. If you want to pass through a place where your enemies are, you have to do so quietly. Equally, if you want to go and rob somebody, and you set off from your house with a bell and a public address system, ringing and shouting as you walk ahead, before ever you reach your destination, information shall have reached him, and he would appropriately get himself ready for you, or he would simply flee the house. He has come like a thief to surprise and arrest all who do not believe in him and also resist his governance. In any case, 
What concerns us today is the revelation of the angel about the man-child and what will happen. The angel did not say he would descend from the sky. The meaning of the passage is, as he came as a man, in like manner, shall he come back. Man has eyes but cannot see, has ears but cannot hear, and the mind but cannot perceive. Their hearts have further been hardened, so they would continue in their ignorance. Even as the Messiah was brought forth by a woman, so also shall the one, who will rule the world with a rod of iron, be brought forth by a woman. All power, authority and glory in heaven and on earth have been given to him. If therefore you say, you cannot worship man, but you prefer to worship stones, trees, water, leaf or sand, has God ever given his power to these elements, as he gave man? This thing is not revealed to you so you will go and preach to unbelievers. It is revealed to you, in the first place, as one who has been called in here to share in the marriage feast, and also so, you will gird up your loins. The disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ asked him, why he spoke to other people in parables, but spoke to them, the disciples, in plain language. He told them it had been written, he who has little, the same will be taken away from him, and added to that of the person, who has much. Matthew chapter 25 verse 29. God has further blinded the eyes and blocked the ears of those who doubt and disbelieve, so they will not see and hear. He has also hardened their hearts, so they may not believe. But he has opened the eyes and ears of those who are his children, and broadened their minds to understand his injunctions and obey to behold his glory. First Bible Lesson, Acts chapter 1 verses 10 and 11 And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. This passage does not say, Christ shall descend or fly down the way he had gone. The passage explains, the same person, the same human body, you watch taken up into heaven, in the same body shall come back. In like manner, therefore, means in the same body, flesh. Was Christ not brought forth by a woman? In like manner shall the iron rod ruler, the same Christ, be conceived of a woman and be put to birth. But whether you believe or not, the one destined to rule, and who has come to rule, will rule undisturbed. The world is only being jealous. The same jealousy that caused Lucifer to disobey God's order, and also caused Cain to kill Abel. The world is always up in arms against anything good. If it is a woman that will bring forth the man-child, who will rule the world with a rod of iron, then what about the one the world is expecting from the sky? What and where will he rule? If God had given all power and authority, in heaven and on earth, to the one who is to rule the world with a rod of iron, and who shall be born of a woman, the one who is expected to crash land, where will he have his power and authority? Those of you who say, you cannot worship man, where will you be? The second lesson says, he has been made a little lower than the angels. He has been crowned with glory and honor, and all things are put in subjection under his feet. It is said, when God shall send forth his firstborn into the earth, he shall instruct all the angels to worship him and serve him. Who are you man to object to his rule? One angel is capable of destroying the whole world yet with such power they all bow down and worship this man child. This is the same being into whose hand all power and authority has been entrusted, and the same person has control and superintendency over all things, created in heaven and on earth, including the angels. His power is therefore indescribable. Two cocks it is said, cannot crow on the same rooftop. There is time for everything. When he came as the sun, he came to be killed, so salvation would come to the entire world. But this time around, he has come to rule with all power and authority unlimited. What is happening now in the communist countries is not wrought by man. If any man were to claim responsibility for the events in these countries, would all nations not rise against such a man? Therefore, God's wisdom, his power, his love and promise, surpass human knowledge. Many people are fasting or asking God to reveal himself to them if he has come or to let them see signs. What they rather see are ghosts, Mermaids, apparition, witches, and wizards. That notwithstanding, there are others who see the Lord and speak with Him. From time immemorial, it is man that is usually glorified, 
and not an animal or a tree. That is why, since Adam and Eve were driven from the Garden of Eden, no other creature has been given admission into the place. It is said, if one has been destined to rule then he will rule. It is man that lost the glory, and the glory shall return once again, to no other being than man. Adam and Eve came as human beings, offended God, and had to be punished. God in his infinite mercy and love has come to glorify the same man. When a father beats his child with the right hand, he uses the left to bring the child back unto himself. The basic entry qualification into this kingdom therefore, is righteousness. That is why, I tell you, this kingdom does not admit hatred, division, anger, fornication, idolatry or the rest of the vices. This message is given to you so you will know, you are in the kingdom of God. The problems of the world are, they do not recognize the person, the man-child, into whose hands, all the power and authority have been trusted. His name has not been mentioned. God is man, the Son of God is man, the Holy Spirit is man, and even an angel is man. When you say, you cannot worship man, are you not a child of perdition? Brotherhood of the cross and star therefore obeys man, respects man, loves man, worships and rejoices with man. It is said, let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 1 and 2 God at each advent takes up human form and manifests as man. He does not come with a particular or special uniform to distinguish him and identify him to the world. If you pray to God to help you out of a problem, and incidentally somebody appears and helps you, who do you think the person is? Is he not God? The fact is, the flesh and blood cannot know him. If your name has been written in the book of life, you will see him with your spiritual eyes. It is said, blessed are they that are invited to the marriage feast. This is indeed the luckiest generation. There has never been another generation where there is abundant love, mercy, peace, patience and glory unto mankind. What caused the Israelites to perish, and even up till these days, they refused to worship the man who was sent to them. They claimed Jesus Christ whom they knew, and his parents they also knew and so, they could not worship him. They were rather waiting for Elijah, whom they believed would descend from the sky. Up till now, they are still waiting for Elijah's arrival. God is man and has life. No flesh and blood could, of course, have known him. The same God has come to teach us how to serve God and please him. What a lucky generation. Second Bible lesson, Hebrews chapter 2 verses 7 and 8 Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands, thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Those of you, who worship angels and the rest of the things, and call upon them to save you, have they been given power? The absolute power has been bestowed upon man. If you have your hope and belief in holy oil, vision, biakpan water, etc., is it written, there is power bestowed on these things? It is said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to man. It is said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Your friends, relations and even your parents may reject you, once they know, you have known the truth. Their hatred is, once you know the truth you are bound to be free from their tentacles. All your friends, relations and parents can deceive you, and let you down, but the Holy Father will never leave you comfortless. Always look unto the Father, for he alone is the only source of salvation. If you go to a visioner and buy him food, clothing, and build him a house, will he or she help you? Many people have wasted all their wealth in ministerial work and celebrating feast, yet these things could not bring salvation unto them. Others pray, burn incense, read the six and seven books of Moses, and say incantations, calling on the names of angels. All these things cannot help them. Do not therefore hope on, or believe in, any other thing than in God alone, who himself is man, unto whose hands all power in heaven and on earth has been entrusted. It is said, all things are put in subjection under his feet. Except this thing is revealed to you, you cannot know it, and you cannot know him. 
you could employ the services of the police or army and give them ammunition to guard and protect you, yet you may still be killed. This is so because, it was not written, these people will protect your life and property. That is why, the same police, army and other security agents, who are armed to the teeth to protect life and property, always turn around to kill and destroy. They are self-centered and rebellious. The angels also are rebellious and unsympathetic, and that was why Lucifer refused to obey God's instruction. But God is all-loving, patient, kind and good. When Lucifer discovered a kingdom has been provided for man in the Garden of Eden, he became angry and went straight, and deceived man, so man would be driven from it. He was happy when man was driven from the Garden of Eden and he thought, the kingdom would be handed to him. That did not happen, for God has his own thoughts, and still reserved the kingdom for man. He has come to lead man back into the lost kingdom. That is why, Satan has intensified efforts to fight man and mislead man so man will not enter the kingdom. God is love, the truth, mercy, peace, patience, hope, faith, and everything good. You cannot get close to him with any filth. Man has been suffering and today he continues to suffer because he depends on the angels for existence and guidance. The laws that were given, even the Ten Commandments handed to Moses, and the punishments that accompanied them, came from the angel. God is so merciful and kind, he does not want any person to suffer. Shortly there will be no more robbery, fighting, killing, and oppression in the whole world. He has come to save mankind, whether or not man accepts him. He has not come to parade himself along the streets, or to appear on the television, or to perform miracles. He has been endowed and adorned with all power and glory to rule. He has come to straighten all the things that had been crooked. Having been endowed and adorned with all power and glory, what does he need from man or any other creature? He rules with love, peace, mercy, patience and all the virtues. He wants all nations to be one, all to be well fed, clothed, sheltered, and free from the bondage of Satan, sin, and from sickness. Can any man do these works? That is why, he does not have the need to consult any person for any advice, because human beings themselves are deceitful and selfish. He has the power and authority to do anything. He is complete. There is therefore no need to go about preaching to man or animals God has come. What is the use? What is man capable of doing to God? Those of you God has called to participate in this marriage feast, should only strive to forsake sin. He has come to free the oppressed and to lead the world onto the accurate wisdom of the truth. Whatever situation you find yourself in, just call upon him and he will answer you. Golden text, Revelation chapter 12 verse 5 And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. Does any scientist know anything about the above passage? Does any church have any idea about the passage? Do the secret societies know anything about that passage? The woman brought forth a man-child who would rule all nations with a rod of iron. This is a passage all of us should fast and pray over and be careful of our activities in view of this passage. The passage summarizes the theme of this gospel. He has not come to go about from street to street begging for anything or to campaign for anything. He has come to rule and to reign, and is seated on his throne in his kingdom. The first lesson made it clear, as was stated unto the Galileans. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you unto heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Acts chapter 1 verses 10 and 11. The second lesson states clearly that man, though made a little lower than the angels, has been crowned with glory and honor and all things have been put in subjection, under his feet. Still, man has not come to this understanding. Other spirits had been here, even before the creation and the advent of Adam and Eve, but God did not find it fit to give glory and power to the spirits. The angels, the trees, the animals, the fishes, the birds and the rest of creation had existed before Adam was created. But he did not find it fit to glorify those creatures, and bestow his power, and authority on them. If you continue to resist the rulership of man, pray fervently for yourself. Those who claim to worship only the living God should continue.
What many people do today is to punish man, disagree with man, imprison him, and do all sorts of things to him. People assemble stones, sticks, sand and leaves, and worship them and nobody complains. But if you say, you worship man, you are immediately condemned. People believe and worship juju, soothsayers, mermaids, amulets and the rest of the fetish things. But you stand aptly condemned if you say, you worship man. This gospel is to bring to your knowledge the fact, man has been destined to rule and therefore been endowed and adorned with power and authority to do so. Therefore, whether the person is white or black, young or old, short or tall, it does not matter. All you have to know is, he is man. He was born on earth. Where he is born and how he looks like is what the world does not know. The only pointer to his physical manifestation is the state of things in the world today. But man does not care to give a second thought to these things. The churches, the institutions of higher learning, the secret societies, companies, governments and indeed the entire world have all failed and they are all empty. The three wise men, who went with gifts to pay homage to the newborn king, did not bow down and worship a stone, stick or any other thing on their arrival. It is made clear. They bowed down and worshipped the newborn child called Immanuel, meaning God with man. It was also revealed, a young girl shall bring forth a child and his name shall bring salvation to mankind. He came and completed his assignment. It was again written, he shall reappear in human form, and he shall carry out greater assignments. That is why, we are told, a woman shall bring forth a man-child, who will rule the world with an iron rod. That glory and honor has been given to him and all power has been brought in subjection under his feet. If this man-child could wield such enormous and unlimited power, would Satan then be left with any power at all? Could Satan or death, or Hades, or any angels or any man, for that matter, be more powerful than the man-child? His position is incontestable and his power unrivaled. That is why, when I hear you say, Our Lord Jesus Christ had died, I rebuke you, because you are saying, what you do not know. If his kingship were to be carnal, by now he would have been dethroned. That is why, when you say, man passes man and position passes power, I prove you wrong. For he who has power is greater than the person who has the position. That is why, a king can easily be dethroned by his subject at will, and a government or president can be overthrown at any time by the people, the masses or electorate. This is so because, these are the people, who have the real power in their hands. Christ said through Paul, the kingdom of God does not consist in eating and drinking, but in power. This further proves to you, power surpasses position. If you ask God to give you money, wife, husband, children, houses, and so on, what would you do with all those things, if you have no power? But any person, who has power, can just come around and take all your property away from you. That is why, this man-child has come with glory and honor to rule the world. No person has ever come and ruled the world with an iron rod except this man-child. That is why all power in heaven and on earth is brought to total subjection under his feet. If you therefore call him Jesus, prophet, or any name other than the iron rod ruler, you have failed. If you also pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven or on earth, you have equally failed. He is seated on his throne in his father's kingdom. He has come in his glory and never to move from place to place for anything. If therefore you find anybody or persons who go from place to place claiming to be the promised one, know the person is a deceiver and a hungry person. His power is not limited to any particular geographical area or planet. His power stretches forth to all the planets, all the nations, and unto all humanity and creation. His kingdom and power have neither beginning nor end. His kingship is not ordinary or man-made and therefore is unshakable and irresistible. May God bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you Father.